I'm gonna be sharing with you a step-by-step -step guide on how to buy a house here in 2023. Now, I'm doing this video and it's meant to be a step-by-step -step beginner's guide to anyone looking to buy a home in this changing market. Now, I've made videos like this in the past, but because of how the real estate market is always changing and with talks of a market crash and rising interest rates, I felt it was important to update and make sure that everything that you need to know about buying a home is relevant for today. Now, as a realtor that started back in the 2008 crash, I'm gonna share with you what you need to look out for and what to avoid. So without further ado, here are the 10 steps to buying a home. Step number one is, are you ready? Now, if you're watching this, you might say to yourself that you are ready and that may be the case, but here are three quick and easy limits tests to make sure that you're ready for step number two and step number three. And that's starting out with steady income. With the market changing and people losing their jobs, you want to make sure you have a steady income. However, if you're self-employed, you actually have to have two years of tax returns. They want to go back to fiscal years and look at what your income has been and then average them together. Now, if you have that, then you're good to go. We go on now to DTI and that is your debt to income ratio. Now, you want to make sure that your debts don't exceed 30% of your gross income. And the last one is your credit score. Now, we're going to get into credit score a little more later on in this video, but here real quick, you're going to want to make sure that you have a credit score above of 640 points. Okay, step number two, we need to find out what you can afford. Now, a bank is gonna give you a pre-approval letter based on what your max amount is, and that's what you're gonna ask for, but it may not always be in your best interest to get the maximum amount that you can afford. You're required to really manage and decide what you want your budget to be, and that's gonna bring it down to two main factors. You're gonna be looking at what your monthly costs are gonna be, your mortgage payment, and your up front costs and what those are going to be. Now, I put together a spreadsheet, you can find the link down in the description, where you can actually put in your income, you can put in your debts, all of the monthly costs that you have. So check out that link down in the description. Now, my suggestion, when it comes to a mortgage payment, you're gonna wanna make sure that it does not exceed 30% of your net income, not gross. The bank cares about gross. We wanna focus on your net income what you actually are going to have after taxes and everything else. Now, a quick bonus tip right here, as you're talking with a lender, make sure you ask them about first time home buyer programs because they might actually be able to provide you with some down payment assistance and give you a better deal when it comes to buying a house if it's your first time buying a home. Moving on to step number three, let's look at your upfront costs just a little more closely. Now, 3% is the very least you can get with a conventional loan. You can get an FHA loan at 3.5% and a conventional loan starting at 5%, all the way up to 20%, 80%, even 95% if you wanted for a conventional loan. Now I have 20% on here because that is going to be the percent that you need to have for a down payment if you wanna avoid P and my insurance, which is private mortgage insurance. This is required by banks to make sure you don't default on the loan, and if you have a larger down payment than 20%, you can actually avoid that altogether. Now if we take a look at your closing cost Cost right here, those are going to be a collection of fees put together to give you a number. Now, let me give you an example. Let's assume you're doing a $300,000 loan at a 5% down payment. Your down payment is gonna be roughly $15,000 at 5% down, and your closing costs are going to be around $9,000 or 3% of the loan value. That's a good estimate just to get an idea of what your cost going to be. We're gonna actually ask the bank to give us an actual cost sheet to give you real numbers so you can budget more effectively. Okay, step number four. Now that we've looked at some of the numbers, we're more comfortable, it's time to approach the bank. It's time to talk to a bank. However, if if you wanna know what your interest rate would be for your area before you actually talk to the bank, you can check out this site right here, the CFPB Rate Checker. It actually is going to allow you 
to put in your information, your area, and it's gonna tell you what rates are gonna be based on the area you're in. Now, I'm in Nebraska. Rates for me were around 6.9% as the time of this video. Then you can plug those numbers in into the spreadsheet linked down below if you would like, or you can now talk to a bank. Now, when you're talking with a bank, you're gonna wanna make sure you ask them to give you a maximum pre-approval letter. If your budget is less than that, that's okay. It's not going to affect you putting an offer in, but it saves you time in case you wanna increase your price because a lot of different reasons, just get the max pre-approval amount. Now coming back to budget, we wanna find out what the bank has to say. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually find a home online that you like and submit that to the bank and tell the bank that you would like a cost sheet to find out what the monthly payment would be as well as the upfront cost because with taxes, those are gonna be the biggest factor that affect what your monthly payment's going to be. And the bank already is going to give estimates for that upfront. So you wanna actually get real numbers and this is gonna help you budget more effectively. Now, when it comes to ideal terms, to get the best rate, you're gonna to wanna to have a 740 credit score and put about 20% down for a down payment. Now, if you can't do that or you're, it's not in your budget to do so, you can actually still get a loan at a minimum of 640 credit score like I shared before and with a 3.5% down payment for a a FHA loan or 3% if you can qualify for that FHA loan. But at the end of the day, make sure you get a pre-approval letter because most sellers are gonna to wanna to know that you qualify before they let you in the door. Now, when you're talking with a bank, I made a video right here that you can check out, but here are the three things you're gonna to wanna to talk about. You're gonna to wanna to ask them about what their interest rate is. Interest rates are gonna change from bank to bank. Then you're gonna to wanna to ask them what their fees are, what their underwriting fee, their processing fee, and their origination fee. Those fees are gonna vary from bank to bank. And the last thing that you really need to consider when it comes to choosing a bank is their customer service. That's gonna be really hard to determine, customer service. That's why focus on the first two and then get a recommendation from your local realtor that you're working with and find out what customer services like with those banks or what experiences they've had in the past. And that leads me right into step number five. You have to find an agent. There is zero cost to you. They're actually paid completely by the seller and they represent you. You wanna have representation. Now, you don't actually need a realtor to buy a house. Me being a realtor, you're surprised I'm saying that? Yeah, so am I. You don't need one. You can actually do this on your own with a title company. However, there's zero cost to you and you get the expertise from a realtor that has years and hundreds of deals under their belt to make sure they're getting you the best deal possible. Now, the bonus tip on this one is we can help. Whether you're looking here in Omaha, Nebraska, please reach out. We have people from all over the country and world that are always reaching out. We love that and we want to be able to help you. Now, if you're looking in another area or another state, please reach out. We'll find you and connect you with people that we have relationship with all over the country that are going to make sure they do a phenomenal job for you. Okay, it's time to start your home search. You have a realtor, you can start looking at homes. And I would say, honestly, the average time it's going to take to find a house is between two and 14 days or eight houses. The average buyer needs to see about eight to 10 homes before they feel comfortable and confident about buying or pursuing a particular property. Before you actually begin this, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have your three must-haves when it comes to looking at a home. Don't think of this as house shopping. Think of this as home elimination. I wanna eliminate what I don't want so that my eyes and ears perk up when I find the one that I want that has all the things that I need. Now, I made an entire video on how I actually have my clients look for houses and I'll link that video right here for you to check out. Okay, so you've looked at houses, you found a house, it's time to make an offer. Now, here's the reality. Depending on the market determines different strategies and you need to rely on the realtor to know the best approach on putting in an effective and strong offer, but at the same time getting you the best deal. One of the pro tips that I have is to include a cover letter. That cover letter gives a little story about you. People love stories. 
So tell a story about you and your family on your journey of finding and looking for a house, how it's gonna start a new beginnings for your family, and that's gonna create an emotional attachment that could help you get a lower price on the house, even if you potentially could be competing with somebody else. Now, once your offer is accepted, you're gonna be submitting earnest money. This is earnest money to make sure that the seller knows that you're serious about buying a house, and that's gonna be due typically by the time you get your offer accepted. Now, there's three outcomes that can happen when it comes to getting your offer accepted. You could either get rejected, they don't want to accept your offer, they accept your offer, or they give you a counter. And that's where you're gonna negotiate back and forth. And this is where leaning on the expertise of your realtor is really, really gonna come in handy. Okay, we're almost done, only three more to go. And step number eight is all about appraisals and inspections. These are the two biggest hurdles when it comes to buying a house, because these are the reasons why deals fall apart. We're gonna wanna make sure we do an inspection if the market allows, almost always literally almost always it's more beneficial to be more general when asking for repairs than itemizing out every single item that needs to be fixed. Sellers are not gonna go item by item disagreeing with you on individual things when you present a lump sum and you're almost always going to get more money when you do a lump sum compared to itemizing things out. Step number nine is closing date. We are here. Now the bank should have given you a definite amount that you're gonna owe for a down payment and closing cost about three days prior to the day that you're gonna close on the house. You're gonna wanna make sure you review that to make sure there isn't any notable mistakes. You can also have your realtor thumb through that as well. On the day of closing, you're gonna be writing a check. You're gonna be writing one check and then they're gonna take that money and start paying everybody else that is a part of that transaction because it just makes it so much easier and simplifies the process on the day of closing. So you're gonna be there approximately 30 minutes to an hour. You're gonna sign your names a hundred times literally and then at the end of it, you're gonna take a picture with your realtor and get the keys to your home and that is it. You are now a homeowner, however, you need to answer this question. Should you buy now or should you wait? My personal answer is that none of us know exactly what's gonna happen in the real estate market when we look at the long-term market. Right now, everything's moving down. So could it go down more? Yes. Could it maintain? Yes, it all depends on the economics of what's happening really worldwide. However, the thing that I've always learned is that you should date the rate and marry the property. So if you're planning on being the home for the long term, buying a house now wouldn't be a major concern for me because you can also refinance later down the road. However, if you're planning on only being there three to five years, I probably would suggest waiting just a little bit, maybe mid 2023, end of 2023, because we obviously don't know what's going to happen, but the signs are showing that the market's gonna go a little bit lower and you wanna put yourself in the best position to get more equity later down the road, or if you do have to sell quick, you wanna make sure you're buying closer to the bottom. So if you have to sell, you're not selling at a loss. That's just the worst and you wanna avoid that at all costs. And there you have it guys, everything you need to know to buy a house in this changing market. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching guys. If you're looking to buy a home here in the Omaha Metro, area check out the links down in the description and please reach out we'd love to chat with you and if you want to know the mistakes you should avoid when it comes to buying a house check out this video right here and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video take care